Hey guys, it's Chelsea from Little Mountain Ranch. Welcome back to my channel. I'm coming to you from a rather blustery British Columbia today. I think it's probably in the minus 20 range outside, but it is absolutely beautiful. The sun is shining. We had a ton of snow dump on us in the last couple of days, and this is the first major snowfall that we have seen here this winter. Hi, Maple. And um, so everything is bright and sparkly, and it looks absolutely beautiful. But one of the things that I always need to do, having a farm, your tail is making noise, Maple. <laughs> Um, one of the things that I always have to do when it gets really cold like this when you have a farm is to give the animals a little bit of extra protection. Would you guys get off the deck? You're going to knock my camera over. You want to say hi? So this is Cypress. Whoa, <laughs> Maple. Okay, okay. <laughs> and Maple are male and female Great Pyrenees guardian dogs. What do you guys think? You guys love the cold, don't you? Hey, don't you? All right, I have to get back to work. I have to get back to work. In general, Great Pyrenees actually love the cold. They are bred for it. They much prefer winter than they do summer. They have actually more energy in the winter time and bouncing around like puppies. Um, and they're just are so happy and they'll just lay right on a big pile of snow and watch over the farm. But when it starts getting really bitterly cold, I um, bring them inside at night and they don't like it. <laughs> I usually have to drag them in. It's more for me than it is for them, quite honestly. Um, negative 30 just seems far too cold, I think. Anyway, even though you guys like it, don't you? We have probably had one of the most mild winters I at least ever remember having up here in the interior of British Columbia. We have had temperatures above zero off and on for most of the winter. So it's been super mild and my pigs have been living in the undercovered spot of my barn. I'll show you in a sec and have been quite happy and fine in a big pile of hay. But now that it is going to get down into the negative 20, negative 30 range, I want to get them moved into the barn for this week. We're only expecting to see temperatures this cold for about a week. So I'm going to move them in the barn. One of the things about having livestock in the winter time in the north is that you want to protect them from wind. Wind is the real killer and the thing that will cause issues with frostbite. Also high humidity is also an issue. So you want to really make sure that your animals are dry and protected from the wind. So that's the first thing that we're going to do um, is get those pigs all taken care of. I thought it would be fun to take you along with us, especially for those that live in southern climates and don't get to experience winter like this and just see how we get ready for really cold temperatures. All right, let's head down to where should we go first? We'll go down to the barn and get the hay and the pigs. Hopefully moving the pigs isn't going to be too difficult. Uh, moved into the barn. Cypress, what you doing? What you doing, big guy? Sweet boy. Are you coming, Maple? You're going to come with us? Come on. Maple, come on. Good girl. We butchered a bull the other day and they have some of the bones up there, so they're not wanting to leave those, I guess. I have these three chickens that have been living down in the barn. They broke out of the chicken coop in the summertime and they um, moved down here and they actually live in with the pigs. These silly chickens. So this is where the pigs have been. <clears throat> it's an undercovered spot with lots and lots of hay and they've been completely fine here in the mild temperatures that we've been having. Hey, pig pigs. How are you? Hi, piggy. Pigs don't mind the snow at all either, but for the most part, they stay buried in the hay. This is the pen that we are going to be putting the pigs in. So I just have the boys bringing some hay in here. And this little mister, this is Elvis. Hey buddy. The plan for the barn cats, like I mentioned, um, I think, I don't know, a couple of videos ago, is to make a heat box. And I'm gonna be doing that today. It's not gonna be as fancy as the one that I was hoping to make, but it will be warm. Hi, what do you think, bud? <laughs> All right, what should we use to make your heat box, buddy? 
We've been so spoiled by this really, really mild winter that we've been having, and I have not acclimatized to cold weather at all. I feel like a big baby. It's cold, isn't it? Oh my goodness. I have actually think what I'm gonna do is leave these guys out here during the daytime while it's sunny because they get some of the heat, the UV from the sun because they'll actually be warmer out here in the sunshine than they will in the barn and then I'll move them in the barn at night. What do you guys think? And these ponies are actually not our ponies. They're our neighbors from over the way, but they broke into our pen the other day so I'm actually gonna have to get the girls to bring those back over to the neighbors. They're so cute. My girls want ponies so badly. Could you come outside too? Get a little bit of sunshine? He likes that. Yes, he does. He loves it. Okay, let's bring in some hay. With keeping pigs in the winter is really deep hay bedding. So we'll make this at least three or four feet high and then they'll burrow right underneath it and keep toasty warm. So this is where we feed the barn cats. So I think what I'm gonna do is make the box, the heated box area right here. And this heated pad is super cool. It's actually like a stiff heat pad and then it has the soft pad on the top. And so I don't actually need a huge box for this, but what I am gonna need is an extension cord somewhere around here. I could just leave the heat pad like this, um, and that's what it's actually designed for, but I feel like if I put it in a box, then it's just gonna offer them even a little bit more protection from the cold. So I mentioned I got this um, heat pad at Princess Auto and you've heard me mention Princess Auto a couple of times now and that's because they are a sponsor of my channel. I'm really excited to have this partnership with them because it's a business that I can actually get behind. So I will link their website down in the description box below if you wanna click on it and go check them out. You're already laying on it and it's not even plugged in yet. Let's get that plugged in, shall we? There. It's not really what I had in mind. I really wanted something that, I think where am I gonna have to actually build something? Let's see. I'm gonna go talk to Dan and see what we can come up with for a bigger box. But he likes it. You like that nice warm spot, buddy? Oh, that's so cute. What do you think? It's nice and warm? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm gonna go talk to Dan see what we can come up with. So one of the challenges of driving a giant van like I drive is the fact that it is not a four wheel drive, it is a rear wheel drive and it gets stuck often. <laughs> so the other day when we had to plow, I pulled it in down here without thinking about the fact that I'd probably never get it back out again. So we're gonna haul it out with the tractor. And then Dan just cleared the parking lot with the tractor, so we're going to get it moved back up there again, and then it'll be fine to be able to get out. vehicle challenge in cold temperatures like this is if you forget to plug in your block heater so a block heater for those of you that live in the south that don't have them it's just a little plug-in heater that goes and it heats up the block of your vehicle so we forgot to plug in Dan's truck so now we're gonna have to dump it from the van and then get it moved up and get it plugged in because it's also a diesel and diesels just will not start in the cold temperatures like this at least not older ones like we have Oh my goodness, I just don't want to go inside. It's so beautiful. It's been kind of overcast for the last couple of weeks. So having sun like this is just fabulous. 
Um, so you, do you want to just plow? You're going to plow this out with the tractor? Yeah, I don't even know if the dump truck's there. Maybe you can give me a hand with that. Okay. Try starting it with this beaver and see if it goes. Okay. Sounds good. So we've been kind of spoiled by this mild weather. Normally we just have our vehicles plugged in all the time, but this year it's been so warm we haven't had to. One of the other issues that we've been having is that our barn has been filled. We butchered our bowl, like I mentioned earlier, a couple of weeks ago, and we've been hanging it in the shop. So one of the entire bays has been taken up with our other tractor hanging our beef because um, otherwise we would have this tractor in there and it would have no snow on it and, and start. <laughs> We have the plow truck going, so now we are going to go plow the driveway. This is something I love doing. Oh right, I have to go on the other side because that door doesn't work. I've pulled out the big giant wool hat because it's just getting colder and colder by the second. But this is how Dan and I get quality time as we go plow the driveway together. This driveway um, was one of the things when we first bought this property that I was completely captivated by because it's this long, like I mentioned, it's two kilometers long and it kind of winds and meanders through the forest before it gets to the ranch. And um, I just love it, it makes me happy. So now what Dan's doing now is we're up by the main road and obviously if he just runs our plow out onto the main road, he's gonna make big snow drifts. So he's just clearing out the area at the main road so that we don't offend any of the neighbors who come flying along and have to go through a big snow drift. <laughs> All right, we are now done our plowing and my battery is about to die on my camera. So I'm going to have to sign off this video for today. But Dan and I still have to go down. What we decided to do for the cats is to use a the, one of the big Rubbermaids and cut a hole like a door in the side of it and put that over top of the heat pad and I think that should work. So next time we're up in the barn I'll take you up and show you what we ended up doing. I hope you all have a wonderful day and I'll see you again in the next video. Bye!